Hi marine biology students. In this video, we're going to talk about the need for and several methods of reproduction of marine organisms. Living organisms are finite. What I mean by that is a living organism has a set lifespan. It will live for so long and then it will die. Reproduction is required for the persistence of a population. For a population to continue and to stay at a somewhat constant size, the death rate and the birth rate has to be equal. If it's a growing population, the birth rate exceeds the death rate. If it's a shrinking population, the death rate exceeds the birth rate. As we'll see through this next part of lecture, different organisms have different reproductive strategies. The first category of reproduction we'll talk about is asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction does not involve the mating of two individuals. Instead, offspring are produced by a single parent individual. There's no need to find a fertile mate. The offspring, therefore, are genetically identical, or clones, of the parent. Now, if the parent was able to survive to adulthood in the current environment, we also know that the offspring of asexual reproduction will be adapted to their local environment. With asexual reproduction, there will be a lack of genetic variability. And this lack of genetic variability can leave a population susceptible to disease or changing conditions. So one example of asexual reproduction is one organism dividing into two organisms. We call this fission. Fission can happen at the single cell level, and in fact, most cell division is fission. But there are certain marine organisms, like the sea anemone, that as an adult organism, it can literally pinch itself into two and separate and become two individuals. Though its individuals are genetically identical to each other, and so this is a form of asexual reproduction. You now have two individuals where you had started with one. Fission is just a little different than our next category, which is known as budding. Budding is a process where a larger organism forms smaller buds off of their body, which end up separating, developing, and living on their own as their own individuals. So a big difference between fission and budding is that in budding, you have your parent organism and small little buds form, whereas in fission, that one parent organism simply divides into two equal smaller organisms. Asexual reproduction is actually quite common in plants. They can form runners that form their own roots and separate, and they can even become their own plants. In fact, asexual reproduction is so common in plants that it is sometimes referred to as vegetative reproduction. Another method of asexual reproduction is fragmentation followed by regeneration. Now, when you look at these images of these sea stars, you might say, wow, that's kind of weird. Why did that one leg or appendage grow so large? Well, it turns out that in this case, that one leg was severed from a larger organism. And not only did that appendage end up regrowing on that organism, but the severed appendage actually regenerated the rest of a body as well. As humans, we don't have this level of regenerative ability. If someone's arm is amputated, that arm is not going to start developing a fetus on the other end of it to replace that individual. And likewise, the individual who lost the arm would not be able to regrow that arm back. But fragmentation 
followed by regeneration. is a form of asexual reproduction. Now you may not be aware, but sea stars are actually voracious predators in their environment. They eat many different forms of clams and oysters and different bivalves, and so this reminds me of a story over on the east coast of the United States. There were some oyster farmers. They were trying to grow oysters out on their enclosures and, and these farming structures, and sea stars are a predator. And so the fishermen, the oyster farmers, they would go out there and every time they would find a sea star, they would cut it in half and throw both halves back in the water, thinking that they were eliminating this predation on their supply. But little did they realize they were actually doubling the number of predators in the environment because those two halves could end up regenerating and regrowing. So uh, that practice ended up stopping once they were in conversation with a marine biologist about the problem they were having with the sea stars out in their oyster farms. So we talked a bit about asexual reproduction. We're going to talk about how sexual reproduction is different. In sexual reproduction, this normally involves two individuals. or at the very least, it requires two different types of gametes. There are some cases of hermaphroditic marine organisms that are capable of self-fertilization, where the one individual produces both the sperm and the egg, but normally, under ideal situations, sexual reproduction is between gametes from two different sources. So the parents produce the gametes, or the sex cells, and they unite during fertilization. And this produces a new, genetically unique individual different from either parent, and likely different from the other siblings as well. For sexual reproduction to work, there need to be ovaries, which are organs that produce eggs, and testes, which are organs that produce the sperm. Now, many marine organisms release their eggs and sperm directly into the seawater which is known as broadcast spawning. Sometimes this is because the adults are sessile, they cannot move, and so they simply release their gametes into the seawater because they could not go to find a mate themselves. It could also be that there aren't a lot of mates in the immediate area, and so broadcast spawning simply releases the gametes into the seawater in hopes that sperm and egg from the same species will find each other and fertilize. For broadcast spawning to be effective, millions of gametes must be released into the water at roughly the same time to ensure fertilization will occur. Many broadcast spawning species will synchronize the release of their eggs to tides or moon phase, water temperature, some environmental cue that will ensure success, or at least ensure that egg and sperm will be released into the seawater simultaneously. So in this first image, we see a coral releasing eggs at a synchronous time. So this coral and many other of the neighboring corals are all releasing eggs into the water column. Simultaneously, these corals are also releasing sperm into the water column so that egg and sperm will meet in the water and subsequent embryonic development will happen there. In this other slide, we see an ascidian known as Siona intestinalis. So these sea squirts, they spawn each morning at dawn. And if kept in an artificial environment, these Siona will accumulate gametes, both sperm and egg, as long as they remain under constant illumination. Then, if lights are turned off for at least four hours and then turned on again, when those lights are turned back on, the Siona will release their gametes. This is an example of one of those organisms that is hermaphroditic, so will release both sperm and egg. And if kept in isolation in an individual cup or chamber, it is capable of self-fertilization. There are other marine organisms that rely on internal fertilization. 
with internal fertilization, there is a copulatory organ. Or a penis that inserts sperm directly into the female's reproductive tract. Now it turns out that there are some sessile or non-modal organisms that are able to reproduce in this way. One example is a barnacle. The male barnacle has a penis that is more than three times the length of the rest of its body. And so with this, it can end up reproducing with neighboring female barnacles. With internal fertilization, this does require contact between the parents, but fewer gametes are required for successful reproduction. As I had mentioned previously, hermaphrodites are organisms that have male and female reproductive tissue or organs, either simultaneously or at different phases during their life. So here we see another sea squirt. This is Siona savinii. And you can clearly see in this picture the bright orange tube is filled with eggs and the bright white tube is filled with sperm. So this individual produces both sperm and eggs simultaneously. That takes us to the end of this video. Now, before our next video, I want you to consider, do you think we're more closely related to sea cucumbers or squids? We'll talk about that in the next video.